Right, it's now Wednesday. Finally, I've got some port plugs. Overheated, I think it's that sticky, um, it's either an airlock or the sticky thermostat. Uh, Just picked them up from Argos. That's like a drop off place you can use, like a parcel delivery thing. Um, I hope they're the right ones now. I bought like a multi-pack just in case I got the size wrong. From Core Plugs International. <laughs> that made it right. I'll literally just pry the other one out and then tap that in with a bit of thread lock on it. It should fix it. That's thicker than I thought. I thought it'd be really oh, wow. flimsy. Yeah, that's how much it's eroded. That's how much it's corroded. Yeah. Corroded. Eroded. What's yeah. What's the difference? What's Corrosion, it? I think, is metal only. Erosion is from the ground. Yeah, like stone and rock and stuff. Uh, so that's exciting. I can hopefully fix that now. Plus, our new battery arrived as well. Thank you, Sam, for dropping that off. It's like forty kilos or something, I think. Um, I'll talk about that more in a minute. I'll get the engine fixed first. One thing at a time, please. <sighs> Put my core plugs. If anyone ever needs a core plug, just give me a shout. We've just been letting the engine run until it heats up in the mornings and evenings just to see us through. But we we're down to eight volts again this morning, and then now we're just sat at 12.4. Oh. After running it for like half an hour, so you can just tell how knackered the batteries are because they'll literally drop off voltage. And as soon as you put back on charge, they sort of sit at a normal rate and then just die back again. This is where I tried to plug the hole. So, first job, try and pry that out. Sponge, isn't it? Never the nappies actually. Basically, I dropped one of the nuts off of the thermos that held it. Oh. I took the um, thermostat out basically just to try and solve any air locks in it because um, sometimes it wouldn't pop open, I think. And it, I've had a seized one in here before. I took it off, I've lost one of the nuts off the back, and it's down in here somewhere. So I need to find that at some point. I don't know where to bloody hit it. Yes. Up you go. Little kit. Proper knackered. Another problem I've had in here. It's a really bad design when they marinise this engine and done it quite properly. Comes across from the, no, what's that, a header tank, heat exchanger? God knows. Um, it's got like a really dodgy bit of rubber that comes across to a thermostat housing. Now to fit this, you either have to try and put a nut on that with the hose already on it, or tighten this down and then get a piece of hose to fit. And there's honestly like this much of a gap in between, try and bend this hose, this is quite stiff. Bend this on here and then onto that, it's like impossible. Um, I've had it on on and off before once or twice, but it's now starting to split quite badly. Um, it's just a really bad design, really. There's not enough. If I put this onto the hose and then bend it up and then bring it down, this stud fouls the bloody hose, so you can't even get the nut on top. It just makes no sense. Plus, it's really awkward to be in here anyway. Apart from that, life's good. <laughs> This is another bodge from when they fitted it. Because it's not got a calorifier on it anymore. They've blanked this off with a wooden peg going up this hole with a bit of rubber and a couple of jubilees and that drips as well. I have to take that off to get this nut off. What was that? Ratchet. Oh, 
soaking wet now. Ooh. Literally a piece of wood, a piece of mop stick or something. Not particularly watertight. Don't lose it, nope. Now if you put the Jubilee clip along too far, it doesn't reach. It like won't even touch this. Lost in that, I've got again. Okay. <laughs> I've got an idea. Tighten the Jubilee clip first. That should shrink the rubber up out of the way a bit more. Give me half a chance. Oh, okay. This is a bit in it. Ooh, I think it's on. One of these, and I've seen someone use a socket. Not very good for the extension bar, but I'm going to hit that with a hammer. If I do that, I'm going to put some uh, thread lock in and around. Ooh. up a little bit and then start the engine let it run for a bit see if there's any leaks see if it holds temperature that let it warm up and all that um, then I'll give it a good clear out in here drain cooling system and then put it fill it up with coolant <laughs> you can off to do the washing yeah I couldn't do this up though oh no oh, it's very nice today. um I'd honestly take the pannier off and then take that inside I'll leave the bike Have you there. Had lunch? Huh? Have you had lunch? I am um, adding Finn, not even a cup of tea. <laughs> I'm gonna make noodles. Can I have a tea first? What you don't want noodles? I'd rather have tea first. Right. You might want to go on the bow. Oh. Well to be fair, you can jump on it. Clips are not good. Uh yeah, you go on in. Hold that. Or do you want me to take it? What should we do with the bike? Uh Bang up inside the boat for now. Nice jumper. Thanks. I reckon a nice quiet <laughs> evening in front of the fire, don't you? Yeah. This is like prime reading season for me, but my very niche book that Danny picked me up from the charity shop. <laughs> it's more like a textbook. The dynamics of the international brewing industry since 1800. It's got like loads of little studies and stuff in it all on brewing, but that'll have to wait because slightly more pressing issue of the engine was I'm gonna look through Waterways World just to see if there are any like specific articles on BMC 1.5, which is what we've got. Um, I forgot on Readly, who have actually very kindly sponsored this week's video, there's a search function and you can search across the thousands of magazines and newspapers um, to see if there's any specific articles and literally mm. eight articles back or eight articles down in I think October's issue of Waterways World there's a couple who have completely renovated their BMC 1.5 with the help of a mechanic oh. um, so I was reading through it cost them like a grand in parts 
Um, and the other option was four thousand pounds to have it reconditioned by a professional. So it's almost saved what three grand. Like literally send it off, and then they'll replace loads of the parts and do okay. it for you. Um, or a brand new engine's got like ten k. So yeah, I was reading through that. It's actually really mm. interesting. Um, I've bookmarked that page, so I can go back and have a flick through. Yeah. Um, I, just, I can't wait to either rebuild ours or sort something out. <laughs> but yeah, really very kindly sponsored this week's video. Um, you are absolutely Thank like you, a really? you're like a advocate, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely love it. I do. I've been looking at it recently. Now it's approaching Christmas, so I've been looking at Christmas recipes. Let me look. I bookmarked some. I haven't shown you yet. Some of them were like Christmas cocktails, mm. which sounded really nice. I saved these. It's got cranberry mojito. Cranberry mojito, yeah. Um, Still got mint in. Yeah, you just make a cranberry syrup. Oh, nice. Got yeah. you. Yeah, because they do like raspberry mojito, so mm. just like, yeah, nice. Mold cider, Christmas Negroni, thought you'd like that one. Ooh. It's got like bay leaves in uh, cranberry. Oh, I thought you said bay leaves, I was like, no. No, 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 not no. bay leaves. Bay leaves. Bay leaves. Corns, um, rosemary sprigs. Regally, for anyone that doesn't know, it's a magazine subscription app includes newspapers and yeah. podcasts as well podcasts, you said yeah. yeah we've we listened to quite a lot of podcasts and recently we've been listening to the ones on readly so that's been interesting i was listening to again another food one um and also we like learn about history um i can't remember the name of the history one i was listening to it earlier but it's got loads of like they're quite short so it's like nice you like don't bite sized yeah, yeah yeah they're like half an hour long history extra podcast so yeah they're like really short ones some of them yeah, like half an hour, some of them maybe an hour, some of them are like different parts and stuff, but that's really interesting. So if you want to give Readly a try for yourself, there'll be a link in our description and pinned comment. You'll get two months for free and then you can cancel at any time as well. That's really good. Let me know or let us know what you think of it. I'd love to hear what you found on there, what you, what takes your interest. <laughs> <laughs> good night everybody, it's been a long day. Oh gosh. <laughs> the cold is not fun. Good morning everyone. <laughs> Hot drinks, I think. Hey? What temperature does it say? Five degrees inside. That's the coldest yet, isn't it? Did it actually drop down to four and a half in here? Light the fire, get the kettle on. And then I got to get in the engine bay and clear that up. It was actually holding coolant yesterday, we had it on for hours, so we actually topped the batteries up quite a bit, considering. Sat 12.4 volts at the minute. Which is good. Since the battery's been proper buggered, we've only got one eco flow that's half charged. Danny said that that has to be prioritised for charging the laptop, so I've not been able to make coffee. But my mum and dad came out to visit us, and I remember I bought this back when we had the van. It's a little stove top cappuccino machine. It's like a normal mocha pot, but it's got a secondary chamber and it steams milk. Do you want a tea? Yes, please. Oh. <laughs> Whose idea was this then? This would be yours. Oh, Coffee goes in here. Who's ready to help me clear out the build then? Fancy it? Are you talking to me? No, I'm talking to everyone here. 
There's only room for one of us anyway. I nominate you. <laughs> this is my uh, work jumper, just trying to cover up my coat. I've not got a work coat. Uh. <laughs> Say hello everybody, welcome to my boat. Hello everybody, welcome to my boat. So the plan is, I've just been sat there thinking, what I used to do is get a sponge, soak the sponge up, put it in the bucket, and then use the bucket to decant it into a, a bottle or whatever. Because it's like a mix of coolant, oil, and water, so you can't just put it in a canal. Um, although I'm sure some people along here do, because we've seen some pretty bad oil slicks. <laughs> um, what I'm going to do is, I've detached the auto bilge pump, I'm going to put the auto bilge pump in this bit and pump it straight into the bottle. What bottle? A coolant bottle. Oh, right. The yeah. designated coolant bottle. Right. And then I can find a place you can take it to a tip and get like hazardous liquids or something. Because um, it's far too much for nappies. I mean, you could, but you need like three or four packs. It's like three inches deep. Yeah. Mostly water, but there's a layer of oil on top. So I'm going to put the pump at the bottom and then I'll clear up the oil slick that's left with the nappies. You know when you make gravy and then you can put ice cubes in? What and then do? it gets the fat layer. All to the top. Could you do that? Yeah, because the fat's already on the top. So couldn't you do that? Why would I need to do ice cubes? I don't know. But the, the oil's already on top, so it's right. not going to siphon from the bottom. Right. Right, let's see if this works. The pump's in. Bottle's there. Fuse goes in. Ready? Ready. Yes. <laughs> Work smarter, not harder. Yeah. Oh my god. God, that's all proper going, isn't it? Yeah. It's pumped very good. I hear it every night. And then if we fill this up, we know that it's 15 litres. God, alright, it's going to fill up. And I can try and tip that tray. Bloody hell, that's so much fluid, isn't it? <laughs> Imagine how many nappies that would be, or how many with the sponge going shh. That's going to fill it. Where are you going to take that to? I have to take it to a tip. Where the hell is it? There's tip? a literally recycling place back up there. Right. Bloody, I was getting close. You're better off going to empty that, aren't you, and then doing it again. That is... Wow! You're so clever. Sometimes it works, sometimes <laughs> it doesn't. Hang sometimes on. maybe good. Sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe shit. That's crazy. You would never have done that. Like, that would have cost you so much in nappies. <sighs> what about in the bucket, or was that just... Yeah, I'm going to But then what are you going to... I'll have to go and get some other right. waste bottles, and we'll just keep it for now. I've actually got, oh, I've got an oil bottle empty, but I was going to keep that to decant our oil into. I've got, oh, I've got the olive oil bucket. You ain't going to get the lid That's off that any sense. Look at this. That's all coolant. Wow. It took me, what, like 30 seconds? <laughs> oh my god. Right. It's definitely gone down. Still quite a lot in there, though. And I'll put it into the bucket and then decant the bucket out. Bit of dust in there. Ben and Emily have had, like, ice. Yeah, I see. I'm not ready for that. <gasps> oh, there we go. Steady. Oh, that's like another 10 meters. Oh, that crack in the bucket. Dome. No, no, it's just a scratch. It's leaking a bit, doesn't it? Slightly. There's definitely a hole in that. Uh. <laughs> 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 yeah. Like 10 nappies later. Oh no, leave! I've just picked you all up. <laughs> Looks good. Yeah, ten nappies later. <laughs> I've made a nice soup for you. Thank you. Yeah, I'll have that now. I'll come in. That'll probably do. Yeah. I'm just soaking up the coolant out of the tray. I'll put the tray back underneath the engine. Hopefully, it won't fill up as quick now. We can actually see where it's coming from. Yeah. Um, there's a like tiny drip coming from around the water pump area, but. Nothing really to be concerned too much about where I've come from. Try that off, wouldn't it? 
I'm gonna say some doors cold. <laughs> I'll be in there for some soup. I have made a lentil, oh, nice lentil soup that's steamy. Can you do that now? We have got some sourdough under here, but it's too cold, so it hasn't risen enough yet. Trying to eat everything out of the fridge. We took everything out of the freezer. There's not really much in there now. I mean, it looks like there is, but. Thank there you. you. Go. Good morning. We are heading off in search of some water now. We haven't filled up in probably about a week since we broke down. So yeah, desperate need now. I'm um, not too sure if the next water point is at Little Venice, but we're hoping that there's one on the left-hand side in a minute um, by Kensal Green. Uh, it says it's on one CRT map, but then on the other CRT map, it doesn't exist, so we'll see. Fingers crossed for it though, because we are desperate. And Little Venice is about two and a bit hours away, I think. It's nice to see companies still using the waterways to transport waste and stuff. It's like a green initiative that they've started. Keeps lorries off the road and whatnot. That's one of their, is it? Power, Power Day. Innovative recycling solutions. Seeing a couple of their boats going up and down. Yeah. Literally what this was built for. Not necessarily recycling back in the day, but. Probably not recycling. <laughs> Working towards Canal Freight Revival. Yeah, that's like that was actual sight of it. Oh, but like there and where we were before by that other water point, like there should be bins there, it should be so far apart. Yeah. Last time we came, last time we came here to load the fly tipping, they put a camera up and it's clear now. How cool the bridge is. Oh, no more in. Not a tap here that we come past, is it? It looks like a private mooring, but I don't know. There's a trap there, but I'm not jumped on some boat on a private mooring. We have to go a little Venice. Mm. It's going to be a long night. We are just approaching Little Venice ish. Um, like we're 20, gonna 20 minutes away. Oh, 20 minutes. Very excited to be able to get rid of our recycling, which we've been hoarding for a couple of months now, probably. Or well, since we were last here, wasn't it? Over a month. Um, empty the bins, hopefully get some water and have a wash. Yay. I think this will be the one and only winter we do on this boat. Like Fair play to anyone that does it every year. Yeah, I know. It's like December tomorrow and I'm already done. <laughs> <laughs> Blocks 
Little Venice, no one waiting on the water point either, which is always a bonus. This is where we stayed with Christine when we um, came here. So this is as far as we've been, other than turning around in the basin. So yeah, we're gonna get water, turn back around in the basin because all of this is paid for now. You can't actually see me. Oh. Um, <laughs> and then yeah, find the nearest mooring, I guess. Maybe double more. Look at all that rubbish. You can't even get in it. Their license, <laughs> their money aren't cut yet. Yeah, the funding's still there. And there's no bins for miles. I will be putting mine on the pile. The recycling's the council's one, that's up outside anyway. That's just bins. Our two wash puppies, we have filled up the water tank. We are now gonna head back that way because there isn't really any moorings now. We won't be able to make it to Camden in time um, and we're not very likely to get a mooring. So yeah, we're gonna go back that way and maybe double more, maybe there'll be a space. But we're heading back that way, um, maybe in the next couple of days. But first we must turn around in the- Basin. In the Little Venice Basin. Haven't done that before, have we? Once. Oh, once, sorry. We also was able to empty our bins and all of our recycling, which is very exciting. So we have a completely empty um, front porch. Ooh. Feel better now. Yeah. Way better. Surprising what a wash can do, isn't it? Yeah. You think when you're in a house, you can't be bothered to shower, can you? But you don't actually realise how luxurious really it is. You take it for granted. Oh. Where are you going? I didn't know if we go around the island. So to the right is Paddington Arm. Yeah. Left is right the way down towards Camden then. Lovely. Hope that trip boat's going. Put this thing on here for this. He's probably spinning around. He might be going in that spot. These two men are going around that way. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't see the arrows on the other side. Right, back to where we came. For how long that is the answer? That is the question. That is the question. Until we find someone that looks friendly to more alongside, or there was one gap where we could actually have our own bit of towpath. I think that other person hasn't took it. No, that was way back. She's pulled in already. Oh, really? Yeah, so up in London, basically, unless someone's got a sign, it's normally fair game to moor alongside them as long as your boat's roughly the same length. Oh, we see the arrow now. Half snapped in. Snapped in half. They're all moored up. And Joe started looking at fish and chip places, but we're being good, aren't we? Yeah. We're eating up all our food. So we're going to cook some sweet potato fries and have a Greek salad. Doesn't quite hit as hard as a nice fish and chips, does it? But, but to be fair, there isn't many fish and chips around here that are singing. And London prices, 12 quid for a cod alone, plus your chips. It's going to be 30 quid, isn't it? I told you it'd be 30 quid. Two people. I'm not paying it. To be it. fair though, that's still cheaper than if I was to go into an Indian. You reckon? Yeah, because you just get more sides, don't you? Mm. Although some of some of the places we've at have been quite reasonable. We are pretty central now, though, so you ain't getting the locals. I'm gonna make the Greek salad. I've literally Let got my coat on. on. I'm so first. cold. Put some more wood on the fire. Let's fire again. I'll do the fries for a second. Take I already started eating. I forgot. But here are some sweet potato fries with a satay sauce, mozzarella, sriracha. Spring onions, everything seasoning, and mozzarella. And now we're going to watch about the blue zones in Japan. Well, this one's about Japan. Say so, goodnight, everybody. Goodnight, everyone. We're still in the morning for maybe some battery-related activity. And I'm going to tidy. It's a bit much in there. <laughs>